Hey guys, this is GB Wang. Today I'm going to be showing you um, a build that I've been using pretty heavily in the TVP matchup. And again, it's one of those builds that's incredibly difficult to take down. And the opponent that I'm playing against today, um, Spleengasm, he actually told me that he was a Grandmaster, and so supposedly this is his uh, Smurf account. So I figured, um, you know, what better way to demonstrate this build than against uh, like a high, like a high caliber player. So. Um, just real quick, uh, in broad strokes again, the, the way the build works is it actually um, is designed in such a way that it gives you three chances to win. It, uh, it opens up with early um, marine marauder pressure from a two barracks kind of a build, and then it, um, it transitions into marine marauder Thor with a semi all-in push, and if that doesn't outright kill your opponent, you do um, a third all-in push later on. And so you're pretty much giving yourself three chances to win as well. And so the, I found that this um, this really maximizes, it really does maximize your chance to win because you're hitting at really vulnerable times um, against Protoss. So just real quick, the way that this build opens is um, after you build your supply depot, you build a, um, a barracks. So this is a, a rack's first build, and after you build this barracks, then you go for another refinery and a second barracks. And so I, I picked up this build because I, I'd watched um, this one pro, pro player, I forgot what his name was, but how he executed this build um, from a two racks refinery kind of a a uh, setup is that he actually only puts two SCVs on the um, on the gas, and it's a very precise build because it allows you to get um, a Marauder out as well as concussive shells. And um, by keeping the only two SCVs on the refinery, you can actually save up enough minerals for um, an early expand as well. But this is going to be the one base version of it, and so when you get your gas up, you want to put three SCVs on your gas because again, um, the real push is when you actually move out with. Thors, and Thors, as I had mentioned in previous videos, are a very gas-limiting um, kind of a unit. So you want to make sure that uh, uh, that you have enough gas, because this is a very precise build, but just for a later stage of the game. And so, right now, um, this guy has just planted his cybernetics core, and I've got my first marine out. If you look from his vision, he's already, um, he's already, oh, actually he hasn't scouted yet, but he will pretty soon. Um, and you'll kind of see um, that he has to respond to my build. So let's go back. So after you um, after you crank out your first marine, the barracks that cranked out that marine, you want to throw down a um, reactor first because this lets you crank out more units in a shorter period of time. Also, reactors take a really long time to build. And then um, on the second on the second barracks, you throw down a tech lab as well. And so your first push is a pre warp gate. Uh, or pre yeah pre warp gate kind of a push and so what you're gonna move out with is um, is a marauder two uh, two marines and a um, and a an SCV you want to make sure that you have concussive shells researching as well um, on your barracks and so when you when you make this push sometimes what happens is the Protoss player um, they can send out like a zealot and a stalker to intercept you, so you want to make sure your attack moving into his uh, into his base. And uh, and the other thing too is before concussive shells comes up, this co unit composition uh, with four you know offensive units and an SCV, I'd say like um, if your micro is decent, you have maybe a little over a fifty percent chance of taking down a zealot and a stalker. But once that concussive shells comes up, you can take them down pretty easily. And so now I'm starting to push out. It's a little bit later than I would have liked, and then I have that SCV that's following them again. And so the the reason why you do this early pressure is um, the Protoss uh, Protoss is very vulnerable before warp gate comes on, and um, uh, and and so it's almost silly not to do a push uh, when they're at their most vulnerable period. But this is not an all in push. This is kind of like a warning shot. But the thing that's nice about this is if they screw up, like if they don't have a sentry or if they end up losing like a unit or two, then this can really spiral out of control very badly for them. And oftentimes it can even cost them the game. So let's see what happens here. This guy he actually went for um, a two gate robo kind of a build. He already has his. Um, Immortal out as well, and so one of the things that uh, I do want to point out. Let me just pause this real quick, because I had sent an SCV up the ramp. You never want to send your um, your units up the ramp uh, without without the SCV first, because you don't want to get 
your reinforcements uh, or your units cut off by by a sentry. Like that's just really bad. And so here, you know, I realize he's got an immortal out. He's got two stalkers. I'm not going to press the action because this isn't the um, isn't the actual push that's meant to kill him. And so. Because of that, he's actually going to end up feeling pretty secure. He's got his observer out. You know, he's got this army to defend, and he's prepping himself for an expansion. And so when this push fails, as I moved out, what you guys didn't see is I actually threw down a factory, a second refinery, and I put th uh, three, three SEVs on there immediately. I didn't recognize this at this point, that there's only two, but I'm going to put another SEV up there as well. And so you throw down your two factories, and your um, your armory as well. So you're getting ready for your Thor tech. In the meantime, now um, you know it's always good to have marauders because marauders are great versus stalkers. Now um, what you want to do is you want to save up the gas for the Thors. And so when you can, you know you want to um, crank out a lot of marines. I didn't play very well um, in this game, so you can see I'm getting kind of supply blocked. But at this point on, you just want to crank out marines from your from your two barracks, and then you want to get your two Thor up as soon as possible and push out with two Thor. Um, unfortunately, I know most of the time, like, there's going to be an observer in my base, and I, like, I kind of look for it. You know, I look for the, the little cloaking shadow. Um, over here. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it here, so I didn't throw down a scan. Although most of the time I might not even throw down a scan until I'm ready to ready to push out. So in this case, this guy knows exactly what I'm doing. I mean, if you look at uh, his vision, he saw everything. He sees the armor. He knows the Thor is coming. But the problem is, it's going to be hard for him to stop it. And um, for him, this was actually the worst possible scenario for me. Like he knew how to counter this build, but even then. It's like the build is kind of unstoppable, and so what you're looking at right now, he's cranking out an immortal. He's um, he he's making a second robo bay too to crank out more immortals, which is an appropriate response because immortals they can counter Thor, but when they go against Thor one on one, um, it doesn't it doesn't really work out very well. And so one other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a you have stim that's researched as well and so because the stim is really huge um, the idea is that even though the Thors can do a lot of damage the marine marauders can do e even more but the Thor is kind of like eye candy and so it distracts the um, the other player and so now I'm about to, I'm about ready to push out once the second Thor comes up. Just gonna speed this up a little bit to the actual push and note that I also researched um, plus one, plus one armor. So now here comes the second attack. This is only a semi all -in. Um If you looked at my TVZ video, I pull a lot of SCVs. This time I only pull like eight or nine SCVs. I set them to auto repair because when you're playing against Protoss, you don't have to worry as much about getting swarmed. It's the only reason why I have to pull so many SCVs in the Zerg matchup. But um, so now I have my um, I have my Thor's hot keyed. I have my Marine Marauder hot keyed. I'm still actually trying to figure out um, how I want to set this up. So the Marine Marauder are hot keyed and then the SCVs are going to be hot keyed as well and again I didn't catch this uh, observer so he has the benefit of tailing my army and this is really like the worst situation that I could be in the guy has completely hard countered me he has six immortals and he has um, an observer tailing me but let's see how this actually works out so I think you're going to be pretty surprised at the, at the results um, so let's go back Okay, so now he did a very good job. He actually pulled a lot of probes as cover fire, and um, when he when he can, he's going to try to really focus down those Thor. And look at that, the Thor actually just melted away instantly. The SCVs didn't do that great of a job of healing it, but really the other damage dealers were the Marine Marauders, and so bam, this gets absolutely smashed. And now um, you know he only has a handful of stalkers. He's got to go. Um, he's got to pull even more probes, which means you know his econ is pretty much wrecked. And if you look at the income tab now, he's like, he's only got 13 probes. And now I've, um, you know, I, I, I'm doing a lot of damage. Basically, my... My, my my point here is I don't want to kill the Nexus now. I want to pretty much disable him because, as I mentioned before, this is not an all-in push. When I'm doing this, I actually have SCVs. Like, I'm churning out SCVs. And so now you can see I still have good saturation in my base. But now what I'm doing is I'm pretty much disabling his pylon. I'm gearing up for my third push to actually finish him. And this guy, he did a great job. He actually stopped the first push and the second push. Um, it's pretty rare to actually see that in this case. And now 
you know, he's got a lot of um, stalkers, but again, I'm just trying to kill off his infrastructure, disable his pylons as well, and so gearing up for the third push. And um, and so you'll see over here, um, I kind of I kind of overstim a little bit as well, but uh, you know, he doesn't have much. I have a huge supply lead. Um, over him in terms of both army as well as in the harvester count and so now he has to sack all of his probes um, but he does have a lot of these stalkers that are in pretty good health so at this point I kind of start to realize this and I don't want too many more reinforcements to come and and uh, kill the stalkers I'm just trying to focus down whichever ones are hurt and so and so now I'm gearing up for the third push. So if you notice, I have a lot of gas saved, much more than I need to. But again, the third push is going to consist of just Marines and two more Thor. And as you can see, he's got one probe. I've got 20 harvesters. I mean, this is pretty much his all-in push. He has four stalkers. I just need to survive until the Thors come out. And so this time, this is going to be your third and final push. And this is going to be an all-in push. So you might as well take, um, you know, as many SCVs as you can afford. Um, so now, you know, this this time though, the plus one vehicle weapons has been upgraded. Two more Thor are coming out. So let's um let's see what happens here. Um so now I have a lot of Marines. He's in a bad position. I mean he can't really come up here even though the stalkers outrange the Marines, but in this case I'm just gonna keep my Marines near the factory and get my SEVs ready once the Thors come out. So I pull the SEVs because I know he's coming for me, and then um, here comes the two Thors. So this is push number three. It's actually a little bit weaker, and he realizes he's out, and you know he ends up congratulating me and mentions that he's a grandmaster guy. So it's really nice of him to do that. Um, so pretty much in this build, it's it's like a it's a really a really easy way to actually take down Protoss because you're giving yourself three chances to win and um, that's pretty much it in a subsequent video I'm going to explain this in a little bit more detail as well so hopefully you enjoyed the cast and uh, thank you guys and uh, tune in for for more good stuff next time